Who were the most famous players in politics and war? The ones that defined a politics and war's story for better or worse. It's hard to tell who's famous because most players don't talk on Discord that often. But I asked around and created a list based on who I think is most well known. This is subjective. Let's start with Rick Wenton. He was easily the most famous player in the game's history. Every few hours, someone will invoke his name. Despite this fame, most people will never hear or read a word from him. He is more myth than man, and that is part of why he's famous. Requentin was the leader of New Pacific Order, and he is well known for three things. Firstly, he was a very hard worker, and he built MPO into an alliance that could take on the game and win. Secondly, he was very paranoid and distrusting of his enemies, and this led him to found a block which consolidated the lower tier and stagnated politics. And finally, he was so well respected by his members and allies, and so feared by his enemies, that he developed almost a cult of personality. Most players view him as a villain, and compare people to him as an insult, but I don't think it's that simple, because if you accomplish a lot by yourself, people will say you have the dedication of rock. May I ask you something? Your people used to call him demon. Was that an insult or a compliment? An insult to be sure, but one with a modicum of respect. Up next is Partisan. He is the most skilled diplomat in the game, and I'd argue he created politics and wars only hegemony. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Partisan was the head of foreign affairs for the Syndicate, and he created a coalition of alliances known as Syndosphere. Almost a hundred treaties linked dozens of alliances together and united thousands of players. At its height, it had more members, resources, and talent than any rival coalition. And when half their coalition defected to their biggest rival, Syndosphere still won the ensuing war. Partisan was the architect of the most powerful sphere in the game, and some would argue he won politics and war. He has other accomplishments too, but they kinda pale by comparison. Up next is Abbas. He might be the least famous person on this list, but that's intentional. He does diplomacy for Rose, but he's not government there. You won't find his name on the wiki or in many history books, but he is involved in most of the game's politics. Abbas talks to people via DMs or through voice chat. He doesn't talk loudly in public servers or the forums. Most of the game will never talk to him, but all the diplomats will. Abbas is infamous because of this style of secret diplomacy, and famous because of his experience, not his accomplishments. For example, he went on a radio show a few months ago and explained how he hired mercenaries to attack Syndosphere at the height of its power. Hiring mercenaries isn't noble, but it's not surprising, and diplomats don't care that much about it. Diplomats listened in because they wanted to know why he did it, how he could trust them, how much he paid them, and what difficulties he encountered. Next up is Kigos. He's the head of foreign affairs for Cataclysm, and prior to that he led Knights Templar and Rose. Like Abbas, he's not famous for accomplishing something. Kigos is famous because he led a lot of powerful alliances, and he's been a top-tier diplomat for a long time. Next up is Thalmor. He hosts regular radio shows that discuss current events and give players a platform to speak, rather than type. Lots of players have tried to run radio shows and failed. Part of the reason he's successful is because he's consistent, and has been for several years. Next up is Sphinx. He's a menace that caused the biggest wars in the game by accident. He was the leader of the Commonwealth, which was a large but cowardly whale alliance. They were vital to winning wars, but did not have the most skilled or loyal members. This meant that Sphinx was always involved in planning wars, but if he shared that information with his friends or government, it would get leaked and they would get rolled. I'll give you one guess as to what happened before all of the major wars. Next up is Epimetheus. Wise, daring, beloved by all. Also the most controversial player two years running. If you have more than 25 cities, then you probably hate me because I think the game needs to be rebalanced to help newer players. If you were in the top alliances, you probably dislike me because I'll point out their virtues and their flaws. And if my videos helped you, or if you're one of the thousands of players I've gifted resources to, I imagine you have a more positive opinion. Next up is Borg. He created Locutus, which is the most popular Discord bot for politics and war. It can do almost anything that's within the game rules, and almost every alliance uses it. He's very well respected because of his work, and he's apolitical when it comes to the bot. 
I'm opposing him in a conflict right now, and he's still fixing bugs I discover with the bot. Next up is Prefontaine. He was the leader of Terminus Est when it was the largest whale alliance in the game. Prior to that, he also led Guardian. He is well known for his skills in both diplomacy and war. However, the reason he's famous is because he leads the game's design team, which proposes game updates. We have a billion new projects because of Prefontaine, and soon the war system will look very different because of him. And when the war system inevitably results in rage, he will take the brunt of it. But I would caution you not to be too harsh, because before he started working with Alex, the game was kinda dying. We very rarely got any updates. The next three players I'll mention were all briefly famous. First up is Pooball. He cheated. He generated hundreds of billions worth of resources and sold them for months. He permanently changed the game's economy because the admins were unable to delete all the resources without dramatically changing the game. Before he was banned, he withdrew a lot of resources to his nation, and to my knowledge, he holds the record for the most resources on a nation. Next up is Adrian. She was the leader of the Knights Radiant at the height of its power and during its biggest fall. Most leaders fall into obscurity when their alliance is defeated like that. She did resign after a while, but she still participates in the community. Next up is Borhan. He was the head of foreign affairs for Mensa HQ and the Golden Horde. Most players know him for being the mascot of Terminal Jest and hosting radio shows. The next three players are all famous in their field, but are relatively unknown outside of it. Seb is the most successful banker in PNW history. At one point, he was managing more than 100 billion. Prior to that, he built the biggest nation in the game and reshaped the game's politics. He did the latter by loaning 40 billion to MPO whilst they were his enemies. He gave MPO the means to conquer the game in exchange for a lot of interest payments. I think he also loaned to Rose before they took off and became the largest alliance in the game. I'm not sure about that though. DTC is the reason people get spy targets every day during alliance wars. Spies were useless for a long time until him and a few others realized their true potential and used them to change the tide of major wars and do billions in damage. When TKI hit Rose in 2021, then DTC managed to destroy over 1.5 million tanks with spies. And that number is probably even larger in recent wars. I was going to mention Frawley because he helped pioneer 100% taxes. However, now that I think about it, Sketchy is also a big name in economics. Both of them ran high-tax alliances and gathered absurd amounts of trade and growth data. They were also rivals, so people might only know one of them, depending on what side they were on. I think that's everyone. I have some honorable mentions though. Firstly, the YouTuber Drew Donnell. His video on politics and war drew thousands of players to the game and inadvertently helped change the political landscape for the better. Secondly, Ivan Moldavi. He was an emperor of the New Pacific Order in Cyber Nations. He never played politics in a war but he is still regularly mentioned by diplomats that played both games. If you conquer a color trade block, if you create an extension, if you change another alliance's government, or if you simply claim to be the victim in a war, then you might be acting like Ivan Moldavi, according to some CN players. It's truly impressive to leave a legacy in a game you never played. That is why I've included him. Thirdly, Tenages. I know very little about him, but what I do know is hilarious. Tenages was the leader of Seven Kingdoms in early PNW, and he created the most convoluted war plan in the game's history, and it might have worked. His plan was for Seven Kingdoms to team up with Rose and Acadia to attack Viridian Entente. During the war, Rose and Seven Kingdoms would conspire to ensure Acadia took most of the damage. Then after the war, Rose and Seven Kingdoms would attack Acadia. And after VE and Acadia were destroyed, then Seven Kingdoms would attack Rose. True to their name, Seven Kingdoms would have ruled the game and Tenages would have been King of the Ashes. It would have been epic if it hadn't been leaked. And because it got leaked and he got rolled, I feel it's legendary. Every time someone asks me about diplomacy in this game, I refer them to that plot because it's so interesting. And in some ways, it's what this game is all about. Finally, Greeny. He bought Pixel Nations, which was the precursor to politics and war also developed by Alex. He failed to run the game and the code is now open source on GitHub. The money from Pixel Nations probably helped develop politics and war, and the code from Pixel Nations probably laid the foundation for politics and war. For that alone he'd be famous, but he later joined politics and war and became the richest player in the game. 
Then he got banned for trading real-life money for resources, and as a result, all of the game's banks collapsed. He came back recently and created the stock market, which also eventually led to the collapse of all of the game's banks. If there's anyone I missed, then leave them in the comments below. I know I skipped a lot of leaders and people that are pretty well known or are recently famous. That's because I can't really associate them with any major event or distinguishing thing which might leave a legacy and which might affect more than a few hundred players. It's possible you disagree though, and I can't be everywhere, so yeah. Mention them and if I make another one of these videos, then I'll include them.